everyone. Welcome to Virtual Veg Fest Live. And it's our last one of 2020. I can't believe it. You know, we've done over 80 of these this year. We started, I think, in April. And if you've missed any, which I'm sure many of you have, you can go to Virtual Veg Fest on YouTube and subscribe and watch them. There's talks on climate, health, cooking demos, just a really cool, awesome people medical doctors. I mean, there's every topic you can possibly think of that you'd be interested in that you can go and watch. And that would be awesome. And, you know, like I said, subscribe <laughs> to our YouTube channel. If everyone I knew subscribed to the YouTube channel, we'd have thousands of subscribers. <laughs> so let's see. Thank you to Triangle Veg Fest, which is our nonprofit for presenting and sponsoring the lives this week and this month. And also our Pass the Buck campaign is going through the end of December. If you donate a dollar or more, we'll pass the buck. Every dollar that you donate will enter you into win a prize pack from our game. And that you can go to virtualvegfest.com and click the little pass the buck flyer and it'll take you to the way that you can donate. And also our raffle copter is up. It's on all our social media. Plant Based Network, Virtual Veg Fest, Triangle Veg Fest, it just keep going with all the events that we do. If you go to a raffle copter, you'll be entered to win prize packs from Hodo Foods, Follow Your Heart, and Crofters Organic. And thank you to them for supporting us and donating prize packs monthly so that you can win them. And there's just some things that you just need to do, like, you know, follow, subscribe, everything. And then at the end of the month, I'll hit a little button and I'll pick three people to win, which is awesome. And of course we are powered by the plant-based network now. Yay. <laughs> we're part of them and we're super excited and we're going to have some amazing events in 2021 virtually and some in person as well. So today we're going to talk about zero waste and what you can do to end the year and begin the year. And I don't know if anyone's going to do as well as Josie and her family, but it's definitely something inspirationally to try to get to because she's going to show you how much waste they have over the course of a year. And it's not just Josie because it's Josie and David and Nui and Mezzi. So it's four, four humans in a household and animals and dogs and a, a, a turkey. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of animals and beings in their home and they're in North Carolina and Josie is a very good friend. Our whole family absolutely love them. And this is to me the perfect way to end this year. And we'll come back again on January 3rd. I think it is. It's a Sunday in January at 4 PM. We'll have a doctor on, but right now let's bring Josie on so we can delve into this. Hey, Josie. Hi, Helene. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so, I mean, especially, you know, with this year, <laughs> this is a perfect way to, to end the virtual veg fest live year and start the 2021 year off on the right foot to reuse, recycle, reduce, compost, everything that you do in your family. Can you share with everyone who you are and what you do and, and more about like, <laughs> just, I mean, you're incredible. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, sure. So um, my name is Josie, my husband, David, and we have two boys uh, who are nine and four. And uh, we are a zero waste family. Uh, that doesn't mean that we have absolutely zero waste, but we're always working towards zero waste. And we've made vast improvements over the years since we've been doing it. So we started in 2012. Uh, it's when I first heard about zero waste and started the, the journey towards zero waste. Uh, and a little bit of background, when we started, we were making a few trash bags a year, kitchen size trash bags a year. So we we're already pretty low on our waste output, but uh, we just wanted to challenge ourselves to get as close to zero as possible. So we went from six trash bags that first year uh, to four to two. And I, just every year I made a goal of having it um, to a little less than one. Uh, then the next year, I think we're up to 2016 now, was a, uh, a grocery bag. Uh, and from grocery bags, we got down to jars. So I have a whole collection of jars from 2017. Yeah, 2017, 18 and 19, we have a jar this size. 
<laughs> and, okay, there's the camera. Uh, we have a chart this size. And, um, and then in 2020, some of the things that we threw away, or didn't actually throw away, that we collected in a jar last year, uh, we were able to recycle or eliminate from our lives. And so this year we have a, a smaller jar. <laughs> I, I, I didn't, I didn't think you could get smaller than, I mean, you have to half that. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I don't even know, you know, for three years we had a jelly jar, so I don't really know where you go from there. And I was like, well, I do have a half jelly jar. I guess I could try that. <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely amazing because I've se obviously seen you do this talk. Well, I've seen you parts of the talk. So I'm always so busy when you're doing these talks, but I know like the jar, because I mean, last year she spoke at Triangle Veg Fest, the jar was that big, right? And that's just amazing that a family of four with with animals and especially kids that you could have <laughs> such, such little waste right because i mean at the events we people say don't put out a garbage pail only put out compost and recycling and i still put out a garbage pail because i think families some family's going to come in with a child who happened to pick up a wrapper right they came in like a gum wrapper or something where do they throw it? And I don't want to throw it on right. the floor because it can't go in compost and it can't go in recycling, but they come in with their garbage. They didn't get it at the event. They came in with it. So then yeah. what do they do? Or maybe they use disposable diapers. Like that's something that, you know, I've had people come to my house. We don't have a trash can in the house. Uh, both of the bins in our bathrooms are for compost because, you know, tissue, we use compostable floss, um, hair, things like that can all be composted. So we have compost bins in the bathrooms recycle bins in the kitchen and then a compost bin in the kitchen. Uh, but we don't have a trash can. So I have had visitors who've come over and had a disposable diaper and I'm like, I, I don't have anywhere for you to put it. I, I can give you a plastic bag to bag it and stick it in your car, but I don't have a trash can for you. <laughs> how, how do you, you have to explain, you have to explain to everyone, how do you do this? How do you, how do you go, let alone a whole year, but how do you, how do you, have such little waste what's your secret <laughs> well first i want to say that no one is competing with me so don't feel like you have to get down to a jar and um or less and that we didn't start with a jar we started with you know six trash bags which is like at this point it's hard for me to imagine throwing away six trash bags worth of stuff uh, because for so many years we haven't um, but it's still a lot less than the average american or, you know, the average Westerner, maybe the average person. Uh, so, you know, even six trash bags, if, if that's where you get to, then kudos. That's where we started. And, you know, whatever your goal is, um, just pick a goal and go for it. You know, if it's reducing by a third or a half, uh, the how we do it, that's the biggest question. And it's kind of like my whole talk is, is trying to explain how we do it right. Uh, so you mentioned like composting. Absolutely. That's a big part of it. Uh, and, um, you know, when I do my talk, I talk about the five R's. I say refuse, reduce, reuse, recycle, and rot. And that it's important to do those in order, that it's not just a list. It's an order of operations. So you start at the top and start by refusing, you know, trying not to bring things into your home or into your possession that you don't need and then work your way down to recycling because recycling is not a perfect process. It's not a perfect solution. It's energy intensive. Not everything can be recycled. Some things can only be recycled once and then they become waste after that. So, you know, if, if all you're doing is recycling, it's not enough. It's, it just isn't enough uh, for the environment. You have to start at those higher levels. You have to start by refusing and reducing what you bring into your home and reusing what you can, trying to get as many uh, life's out of that product as you can before having it recycled into something else and possibly ending up in the landfill anyway, right? We've heard a lot about how a lot of plastics end up in the landfill, even if you do recycle them, that a lot of them are contaminated or we can't find an outlet for them. Other countries don't want them anymore. So recycling is definitely not a perfect solution and should be the last resort. So you got to start at the top, start by refusing what you can avoid bring it into your life in the first place and reducing what you bring into your life, you know, stopping and asking yourself, is this something I need? 
do I know where the final stop for this item is going to be? Is it going to end up in my trash can by tonight or by tomorrow? Can I avoid getting this thing? Okay. So go into everything that you talk about. I'm okay just being like the person watching you talk. Because I feel like okay, so, I could I totally like, fill this hour just talking. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel like it's incredibly important for people to understand. Like one, I would say, what is composting? We do it. We do it in the, a different way because it's more like here raccoons, here possum, here here yard. Do what you want with it. But there's a better way to compost than that. <laughs> there is a better way, though. Honestly, our way is kind of similar to yours. Uh, <laughs> Because we live out in the country, and so absolutely a lot of what we throw out ends up being wildlife food, I'm sure, and being vegan, you know, it's apple cores and like, you know, a lot of it's like plant material anyway. Um, but yeah, we have an open air composter. Uh, there's a, a great website that I reference in my talk uh, that has a list of like 100 things you can compost that you probably didn't know. And it goes into, you know, like wax paper, parchment paper, things like that. Uh, the bathroom waste that I mentioned earlier, we get a compostable floss that's um, bamboo based that we compost uh, cotton swabs, cotton balls, hair. So tissue, like all manner of, of bathroom waste is all compostable trying to think of something else that's off the wall. Obviously food scraps. We don't use paper towels, but if we did, those are compostable. We use just like kitchen towels to wipe up messes. We have cloth napkins uh, for, you know, while we're eating for our faces. Uh, we use rags. I, old cloth diapers are most of what my kitchen rags are. So we're not using paper towels for anything like that. And they're wonderful. They're super absorbent. They're, you know, really soft. They're great for everything. So, uh, so yeah, we compost all of those items, uh, you know, scrap paper, shredded paper, things like that. We also have a bonfire pit that we use, uh, especially, you know, in, in the winter, we have an indoor fire pit. We uh, use toilet paper rolls with lint stuffed in it as fire starter. So our dryer lint gets burned as well. And that's also compostable. So if you don't have fires, you can compost the dryer lint as well. Okay, questions? When it comes to everything that's in the bathroom, toilet paper, and if you had paper towels, do you need to buy anything special or is it just any brand, I not dyed? I believe it, it's compostable. So is it just gonna go, all that can just go outside? Yeah, all that can go outside. And we don't choose things that are dyed anyway, uh, just because I, I don't see any point. And I remember my sixth grade science teacher made a, a big deal of people needing baby pink toilet paper to wipe themselves with and that he didn't understand why they were willing to injure the environment so they could have baby pink toilet paper. I guess that was a thing in the 90s. I'm not sure. But uh, so, yeah, we're not doing dyed things anyway. But yeah, I, all of those things are compostable and we don't buy any particularly special kind uh, at this point moment we get bamboo toilet paper because bamboo is such a great reusable uh you know uh not reusable but um renewable resource right. so I, I really like the bamboo products for that reason but you know before that we used whatever was cheapest i suppose and and yeah nothing special it's all compostable and then the dryer lint you're right i mean everyone always knows if you don't clean your dryer lint it's a fire hazard Oh my goodness. <laughs> and you're taking <laughs> so to start a fire in the fireplace, we just need dryer lint inside a toilet paper roll. Yeah, we stick it in a toilet paper tube, light one end, it lights up really easily. Yeah, it's a great fire starter. So this I collect the, those throughout the year to use. It's <laughs> the best talk ever. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Oh my goodness, let alone the fact that we could be composting that. And like mm -hmm. almost every single thing in our bathroom can be composted. And longer hair, which is something I'm more familiar with now, there's a lot of it. <laughs> so uh -huh. that could go outside. And I can see that where potentially the squirrels or, or the birds could take the hair and they could use it in their nests, which would be pretty cool. Even though I've thrown, we've had the dogs groomed outside and 
they don't take the fur, even though it's left for them. I was like, but here, <laughs> I'm not bringing it in. So it just stays out there. But I'm fortunate too, even though I live more suburban than you do, I live more country in my little suburban area because I have all woods behind me. So I'm fortunate to be able, and no one's behind me. So I'm able to just, th just throw it out there. I have more stuff to throw out. Composting. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. You. I will definitely get you that link. Uh, and it has, you know, a long list of things. And some of them are things that we don't use anyway, but it's, you know, basically if it's made from a natural fiber, you know, and this is including like clothing scraps, you know, if you have t-shirts that are too worn, socks or underwear, that are too worn to donate, those go into our compost as well. Um, you know, we'll maybe cut them up so that they compost more quickly. But yeah, there's a, a long list of things. If it's made from a natural fiber uh, or from your body, like your hair, uh, it can all be nail clippings, all those kind of things can be put into the compost. Yeah, just Steven's gonna be like, what? <laughs> I was like, compost that. <laughs> we don't need to throw that away. And that in itself will reduce your garbage waste significantly if you have the ability to compost. And of course you can buy a compost yeah. bin. They, they sell them, look online, look at locally, they have them. And if you live more country, then your yard is a great place for, you know, it, it's really cool. Cause I, I know the raccoons come overnight and they, they, they feast. I don't have healthy raccoons. I don't, I don't know if I've spoken about this live yet. My raccoons are junk food raccoons. Cause if I throw lettuce out, they don't touch it. If I throw like leftover <laughs> like chips that we didn't eat that are stale, it, it's gone. <laughs> we have we have junk food raccoons. <laughs> it's really funny, but so I'll say something else about the composting. Uh, if composting is something that you're not interested in doing yourself, if it seems intimidating or you live in an apartment, of course, there are small like bin type compost, but depending on how much food waste or other waste you have, that might fill up really fast. Uh, at least in Wake County, there's compost collection bins at our convenience centers. And I know a lot of other counties are doing that as well, where you just collect it. Uh, Wake County in particular has been, has little countertop bins that they give out that you can collect your waste in, but you could bring it in any thing, you know, set aside a, a five gallon bucket and put all your waste in that and then drop it at the convenience center. And then there's also private services like compost now where you can pay them to pick up your compost and then they can bring you uh, compost like soil to use in your garden, or you can have it donated elsewhere. So don't be intimidated. If you're not interested in composting, you can still find other means of composting. A lot of times community gardens are happy to take compost. Uh, you can, you know, reach out in your community and see what's available either through your local government or through a private company, or if there are others in your area who would benefit from your compost to get those things out of the landfill and into the hands of someone who can use it. And is, like mine, Susan actually brought up compost now as you were saying it, and I was thinking it, and a lot of cities have composting services. Nashville has them. Knoxville has them. Most, most of the cities that we go to, I do events. I look for a composting service to be part of the event. So just check your local, if you're like, you're in an apartment, it's true. Probably don't <laughs> throw stuff off your balcony. <laughs> your neighbors are probably gonna be like, oh, I don't think so. So you can actually have it picked up and they'll use that. I, I probably have the best soil possible in like my backyard, but I don't garden. So it's almost wasted, but at least I know it's very nutrient soil. But Susan did have another question. Can dryer lint be composted even if it contains some polyester fibers? That's a good question. Uh, yeah, obviously all of our, our uh, clothing isn't organic cotton. And so not everything going in there is, you know, the absolute best. Uh, it can still be composted and just the lint should probably break down fine. Uh, every once in a while, especially when I was first learning how to do this, we would compost some things and I'd go to turn the compost and find 
uh, for instance, with socks that have like elastic in them, you'd go to turn it and find it looks like tiny worms, but it's little pieces of elastic. And so you'll find that some things aren't composting as well as other things. And, you know, you kind of live and learn. Some of the unnatural uh, fibers aren't going to, to compost as well. Uh, they're in such small amounts that they probably burn better than they would compost. So, or you could even decide to separate your laundry out and say, I'm going to do, you know, a load of natural fibers here and compost that and maybe not try to compost the other. But I haven't had any lint that didn't compost down uh, after the, the sock experiment and finding the elastic bits. Uh, but that's obviously not in the lint. That's something where I put the whole sock in and parts of it were not breaking down. <laughs> okay, so we've got composting. Check. I know that you run a Facebook group to encourage people to recycle their goods before you throw it out to see if somebody else wants it, needs it. So let's share more about what we can do there. And that still, Susan just said, still better than going into the water system. Yeah, that's 100% true. That's 100% Absolutely. True. So I, I think subconsciously, You've influenced me this year, or maybe I've just gotten older because <laughs> something kind of changed with being being home so much. I've started giving stuff away. I've started cleaning up the house. Steven's a good influence too. I have too much stuff. And I was like, I'm just, I'm just literally like, who wants it? <laughs> like, I just, just get it out of the house. I don't want it here. I can't die with it. And I mean, it's a weird thing to think, but you know, I'm 51. So I've started going, well, let me only have what I really need at this point, And I'll use those things until I, you know, to, to death of the, the, the thing or until I, you know, get something else that I can then give that away and then use that. So I love the fact that you encourage people to go to somebody else first so that especially something that's plastic that can just carry on because it, it's going to be here forever it's what kids toys you know mm -hmm. so please share more yeah about that. yeah so this covers the reduce and the reuse step so with reduce one of the things i say is before you go out and purchase a, a new item you know and it's encouraging the overproduction of a lot of things i mean how many people have you name it, a, a bread maker or a weed whacker or something that they use very infrequently, you know, and, and not all of us need to own one of these things, right? And when you buy something new, you have all of the environmental cost of this brand new product being uh, created. You have the packaging that comes with it a lot of times, you know, styrofoam, which is very hard to recycle to find a stream to recycle. Uh, and the boxing and and all of those things what if instead you went out to see if someone in your community had one you could borrow or have so we have a group that uh, is called post before pitching uh, it's a few thousand members uh, here locally but there's similar groups that have popped up elsewhere uh, buy nothing is i think national or international group that does something similar uh, and the idea just being before you go out and and uh, buy something to uh, see if someone already has the thing that you can borrow or have. Uh, so yeah, seeking out resources, reaching out to your community to see if you can find something uh, that you don't have to purchase. So that's the re reduced step of it. Reduce what you bring into your home new or, or what you're purchasing in the first place. And then the other part reuse is when you have something that you no longer need to put it out there and share with others and see if it can have a second life. It doesn't have to go into the trash. Even if it's not in perfect condition, a lot of times people have the knowledge to repair something or have a use for it that's different than its original purpose. One example I like to give is wine bottles. I'm always finding people who are asking for wine bottles or wine corks or, uh, or, uh, bottle caps, you know, things like that, that they intend to repurpose for a different purpose. So instead of throwing it away, I have these collections where I'm saving things for people <laughs> locally who need these items. And it's better than it landing in a landfill or even being recycled if it can be reused first. 
and get more use of, out of it before it goes through that process, uh, that's best. Yeah, I agree. My first step typically when I want something is I go to the marketplace on Facebook. It used to be Craigslist, but the marketplace on Facebook is so much more convenient. And we have- I feel like it's safer too. Yes, because you can look at someone's profile and you know, see where they are. So we've, we've actually bought a weed whacker from somebody <laughs> on Facebook because why should I buy a new one? You know, that and a couch has come that way. And also try to, you know, get rid of stuff. I've sold my car on Facebook mm-hmm. Marketplace. So, I mean, it's definitely a viable option, a safer viable option for when you want something or you want to sell or give something away. I find the hardest thing in the world, though, is giving stuff away. It's I, I don't understand it, but it's sometimes really hard to give things away. You mean just because you can't find someone who wants it or because it's emotionally difficult? What do you mean? <laughs> oh, no, because nobody wants it. Nobody, it's like, it's almost, it's almost, sometimes people want things of value, right? So when you put a dollar amount on it, people are like more likely to want it. But when you're like, no, it's really in good shape here, free, mm-hmm. you just can't. Well, and then there's, you know, can you give it? Can you bring it to me? No, I can't bring you the couch. <laughs> if, you, if you want the free couch, you've got to come get the free couch so that it goes to some right. home because the couch is actually in really good condition. Yeah, the cat scratched at it, but the couch is really good. <laughs> it was really hard. Couches are very hard to give away. <laughs> I found some groups are have a better, just have a better track record than others. I think the hyper-local groups are usually better with that because you're so nearby that it's not, you know, you're not finding someone 30 miles away that has something for you. It's like literally five minutes away. So I have better luck with those. Donations always an option too. Of course, that's harder with bigger things unless you can find someone to come pick it up. Uh, but, you know, donating to a secondhand store, especially there's a lot of great secondhand stores that support specific causes that, you know, might be close to your heart. And so finding those places to donate things uh, is the other way we've gotten rid of things. But yeah, I'd say the majority of, our, I'm like looking around, the majority of our things are secondhand. Like <laughs> we, yep. we've we definitely furnished our, our home and our kids' toys and our lives with secondhand goods uh, that are that are perfectly fine and just, you know, weren't of use to that person anymore for whatever reason. And we could give it another home and not put in the, the environmental cost or the expense of buying something new. Yeah, I agree. I agree 100%. It's not that I don't buy things new, but I do look to purchase used some some items like I said a whole couch the couch was like brand new and close by in Wake Forest and they even drove it here that's so nice that's so nice people are it's how fortunate we are to be in the south as people are that nice so like okay well I'm bring it home I was like thank you (laughs) this is is awesome I don't have to go rent a truck (laughs) to get this to my house yeah so I mean I I feel like it's really important that and the stuff is the stuff is great. I've I've actually the second couch I've bought used. It you you know, everything looks and is great depending on where you get it from. Obviously you're sourcing it, so you make sure that no bugs or fleas or you know, anything that you don't want in your house doesn't come in your house. And recently because of COVID being home, we I gave away like a car full of of clothing. Like no joke like went through my closet and just started trying clothes on and just going, nope, nope. And, and I'm not talking car, I'm talking SUV. We've, I filled, I filled the back seat and the, and the hatch of with clothing and it was time. And that's what I mean. Like this year has been like, really, it's been a really good year <laughs> for, for stuff like that, giving stuff away, donating stuff. And I'm pretty sure like, you're just like this little angel on my shoulder that, (laughs) I mean, I see you're all over my Facebook. You're, you're in my algorithm, but you're just, you're just that person that everyone should have like a Josie on her, on their shoulder to be like, are you going to reuse? Are you going to like, think about that? Do you need that? (laughs) I mean, it's really, it's, it's important. It's really important. And I'd like you to touch on, cause we talked about this with 
Andrea and JP, but regards to recycling, how I, I didn't realize how much is not being recycled. And that's yeah, concerning. It's a really, it is. It's a really big concern, and especially with plastics, because plastics are, you know, not a renewable resource. It's not like glass or paper uh, where it can be recycled multiple times. A lot of, a lot of these things, uh, plastic is not, a lot of times it can only be recycled once and it's recycled into a non-recyclable form of plastic. Uh, a lot of times those are things that have a longer lifespan, like plastic lumber where, you know, decks or, or benches or tables can be made out of, out of them. And, you know, plastic lawn furniture where it maybe has a longer lifespan, but, that's not always the case. And a lot of the plastics are contaminated. They're either being, it's, you know, plastics that are not recyclable are being put in with the recyclable ones or their food contamination, things like that. And so a lot of these are being, uh, are being rejected because of contamination and they're not making it to recycling. So I always mention recycling because we definitely recycle a lot and more this year than most years, because we are getting, you know, takeout, we are getting our groceries delivered, we're being really safe this year. And so a lot of the things that I talk about in my zero waste talks, as far as bringing your own cup, buying things in bulk, uh, bringing reusable bags to the grocery store, things like that, a lot of those aren't options during a pandemic, either, you know, if you're getting groceries delivered, obviously, I'm getting paper bags or plastic bags, whatever the grocery store is, is sending me or Instacart is sending me home with. Uh, a lot of grocery or I mean, uh, coffee shops aren't accepting reusable cups at this time. So I have the choice of either not supporting these places that are local and that I love and that I want to continue to be open when this is over uh, or supporting them and getting a disposable cup that I, I haven't had a disposable cup in six years and I haven't had a grocery bag in six years and now all of a sudden I'm coming into possession of these things and having to find ways to reuse or recycle them. And, you know, so this goes back to the five levels that I talked about and recycling's down at the bottom. It, it should really be the last resort. And so with the bags, the paper bags, I've been donating to Food Not Bombs. They could really use the paper bags uh, to bag food. And so all of my paper bags have been going to them. And the plastic bags, there's a woman locally who makes sleeping mats for the homeless out of plastic bags. And so all the plastic bags I've come into possession of have gone to her to make sleeping mats. And those are options that, you know, perhaps these things will eventually be recycled, but if they can be reused first and have a second life to do something other than carry my groceries, then that's even better. So are they picking these things up from you or are you dropping them off? For the Food Not Bombs I'm dropping off, I found a local person that I reached out to and I'm able to drive by and drop them on her porch. And the grocery bags, sometimes I've met her and handed them off and sometimes she's picked up from me. Okay. I would love those resources. Sure. So because I can do the same because <laughs> we're in the same community. And then for people... Yeah. And for people not local, reach out and look for things like that in your community. You know, I found the Food Not Bombs because I posted on my um, post before pitching page and asked if anyone needed paper bags and someone suggested them because I thought maybe someone, you know, maybe sold products and, and could use the paper bags or had, you know, a small business where they could use them. I've used some. I've turned them inside out and wrapped packages in them like they're just nice brown paper. Uh, we wrap Christmas packages in some brown paper bags that we were giving to other folks for presents here in our home. We use uh, cloth to wrap our presents. So, and we've had the same set of cloth for years that we always use, but for packages I'm sending to other people, I wrap in brown paper bags and don't have to buy wrapping paper. So there's a lot of reuse options if you get creative or ask someone in your community you know, just put out there, anyone have any idea what I can do with this wine bottle collection I have, or, you know, with all these bags I've come into possession of, uh, for the coffee cups, Subaru collects, uh, to go cups of all kinds, plastic paper, uh, including straws. So as we've come into possession of, uh, disposable single use coffee cups or to go cups, we've taken them to Subaru to recycle. They have a TerraCycle bin there for those. 
And they also have a bin for snack wrappers and bags and candy wrappers. So I have collections of those things that I take to Subaru to recycle. And Publix has styrofoam recycling. I literally haven't had styrofoam in six years, eight years. But uh, as we've supported some of our local restaurants, sometimes we get styrofoam containers before the pandemic. I basically never got takeout. We ate in restaurants. And if I did want takeout, I would often, I would bring my own container and transfer it to my own container. Doing curbside pickup, we're not going into restaurants. So that hasn't been an option this year. So I've come into possession of single use takeout containers that I had to find something to do with, uh, stumbled upon Publix uh, styrofoam recycling program and have taken a few there. So just getting creative and, and figuring it out. Uh, luckily, most of the places that we go use compostable containers. But when we have found ourselves in possession of something like that, just finding the correct stream for it and figuring out where to uh, where to recycle those things if they're not reusable. So Publix with the styrofoam recycling, is it just right there you pull up and you can recycle? Yeah, it's right outside the door. You, you, you're going to help save some planet <laughs> stuff over here. <laughs> we have some styrofoam because we've had stuff shipped with dry ice that's frozen and they're shipping in styrofoam. And to know that I can, is it, is it really being recycled? What is it being recycled into? So a lot of times uh, styrofoam is, is PS6, it's polystyrene, it's uh, recycling number six. And polystyrene typically gets recycled into the plastic lumber that I mentioned before. So I'm not sure why Publix and no one else collects them, but they have um, a bin that's specifically for like takeout containers and egg cartons, those kind of things. Uh, if it's shipping material, if it's, you know, packaging peanuts or anything like that, then shipping stores will often take those back. Uh, or you can post it on a, a page like Post Before Pitching or the local Buy Nothing page, because a lot of times people need those things especially if they have like a home business where they're shipping goods out that's you know free packaging they don't have to purchase so uh you can find a reuse home for it that way or at a local shipping company like um like a mailboxes etc or something like that uh will take packaging material or sometimes i hold on to it for the next time i need to ship something fragile so right exactly these are, these are such amazing tips and if you don't know it could, because, you know, people are probably going to wrap a lot of gifts between now and, well, if you haven't wrapped them yet, <laughs> a lot of people will do it because the kids go to sleep and then you're up all night wrapping. Then Christmas morning, you're just asleep because you, you know, Santa, but <laughs> wrapping paper is not recyclable. And, no. Right. So, I mean, that's something that I only learned. I think it's because of our holiday parties. I think you brought it up. Probably. Like, yeah. Um, parties. You know, you got to check what kind it is. If you are buying, which, you know, again, going through all of the R's, refusing first. So, you know, choosing not to to take in the wrapping paper in the first place, right? Refuse, reduce. Uh, so recycling should be the last option anyway. If you can reuse, get something you can reuse. If you're wrapping presents instead of buying particularly anything that's shiny, foily, glittery, things like that, those aren't going to be recyclable. Uh, something that's just a plain brown paper, that will be recyclable, uh, even if it's the wrapping paper style. Um, and then if it's just a paper kind, then you could also use it in your burn pile. Uh, but if it has anything like, you know, shiny or glitter on it, then that's not something you're going to want to put in the compost or recycling. It'll contaminate the stream. So uh, if you do feel like you need to buy wrapping paper, First of all, the paper bags is a great idea. It's basically the same thing as wrapping paper, right? And you fold it inside out and you can't tell it says food lion on it. So, you know, uh, if you can use a grocery bag, that's even better. But uh, if you are buying wrapping paper, then choose one of the ones that's more like a paper bag, that thicker material that's, you know, doesn't have the extra stuff on it that makes it non-recyclable. But we use cloth. We use, uh, you know, gift bags that we reuse over and over and over again. Uh, we use, uh, you know, uh, decorative boxes, things like that. And I especially like getting those and gifting them to people as part of their gifts because they get the gift inside and they also get to keep a pretty box, right? Um, or like reusable bags, like grocery bags. 
uh, it's always nice to have some of those. And if you have a nice one that people would appreciate, then uh, that's a great way to gift a gift inside of a gift. Right. Yes. And, you know, as as not pretty a brown paper bag is, there's these nifty things called crayons and markers and you know you can draw on the bag and make it more festive and then and then susan just said you can use newspaper oh yeah can be good for wrapping packages yep i mean these are all things that you can do i mean not really thinking i love the idea that as a family that and you're raising your kids to be this way which is even better is that they don't need to that you know okay we unwrap this and let's just put it away <laughs> until the next birthday right which is yours yes yeah. <laughs> right <Yeah. laughs> so, you know so we you can just wrap it my present and presents plural in that <laughs> which which is a really good question for some people because people are thinking like well what do you do for birthdays what do you do for your kids you know how do you how do you manage do you use the same philosophy Re refuse, reuse, reduce when it comes to presents? Yeah. yeah. I mean, they get presents, you know, I'm either getting secondhand presents that are in good condition, or if we're getting new presents, I'm opting for things that are not coming in a lot of packaging. Um, my oldest son, my younger son still really likes to get things. He still likes toys. And so he's definitely getting toys, but my older son really prefers experiences. So for Christmas, he asked for food, which you know, had a few people raising their eyebrows. What does he mean food? But he really likes specialty fruit. He really likes sushi. So we got um, vegan sushi, of course. So he got certificates for his favorite sushi restaurant. Uh, he listens to um, children's audio books. So he always asks for subscriptions to that. So, you know, things like that, experiences, tickets to things. He loves going to movies or or plays and musicals, we've done that in past years. So he's received tickets to different things, memberships to museums, things like that, um, which don't uh, create any waste and, you know, don't create any clutter. You know, they're nice zero waste gifts that, and that's what he's requested. Um, and again, for the younger one, he's uh, turning five in a few days. Uh, he still likes getting things, but, he really doesn't care if they're brand new or secondhand. So we've gotten secondhand train sets for him, uh, you know, that people have passed off or that I've found online. Uh, so yeah, and then we have the reusable packaging. Um, I bake their own cake. We do, a lot of times I make the party favors or I find something that, uh, and of course we're not having parties this year, but uh, in the past I've, you know, made party favors, or I found something like uh, a little potter plant, a little clay potter plant, um, and some flower seeds to give out as party favors. So uh, there's a lot of options out there. It definitely doesn't take anything away from their celebration that we do it waste free. At the parties, we have the compost bin. And, you know, we use our reusable napkins and things like that. So we have like a laundry bin for the napkins, we have a compost bin for the food scraps. I'm using the plates we already own, so I'm not creating, you know, single-use party trash from from the party. Right. And I I still have soap from, I'm pretty <laughs> sure, Newbie's Baby Shower. Oh, yeah. Yep. I still have the yep. soap. It's in the bathroom downstairs. <laughs> I, it's the little leaf, right? A maple yeah. leaf. And, yes, yeah, so I – so, again, like, Josie on my shoulder, like, every time I'm in that bathroom, I – you're you're right there. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're you're part of our house. <laughs> so I mean, going forward, like down the list, I think we're at rot, right? Well, we kind of already talked about composting. Um, yeah, I think we pretty much got through all of them. Um, I did have a few things I wanted to say about about being zero waste in a pandemic. I made a blog post about this too, and I'll share with you my blog address. But uh, what I've been telling people this year, because people have reached out to me with some of the things I've said, like, you know, I am don't know if I can keep supporting my coffee shop because they won't let me use my reusable cup anymore. Or what am I supposed to do about groceries when the grocery stores have shut down the bulk sections? So 
you know, people have reached out with these questions and it's true. Most of the things I talk about and that I recommend for people aren't options during a pandemic. And so it's been really hard to be zero waste during a pandemic. We're definitely recycling more than we did before. We uh, get a TerraCycle box to recycle the things that aren't traditionally recyclable because TerraCycle can do a lot more with the recycling stream and they produce some of the things I mentioned, like the picnic tables and benches uh, that schools or counties will buy. Uh, so we've definitely done more of that this year and recycling is not, you know, it's low on the list of priorities. I think it's important to do those first things first, but that's not always a choice during a pandemic. So I've been telling people, give yourself a lot of grace, recognize that this is all of our first pandemic, that we're not going to get it perfect. It's not going to be easy. There are things that you're not going to be able to do this year that you usually do. Uh, you know, I've had to resort to buying peanut butter in a glass jar instead of using my jar to go grind my own. So because I'm not going into a grocery store and I don't even know if they have that section open at this time. Uh, there are things you can do to, to still go down the list and do the best you can. For example, one thing uh, to reduce when we go get beverages, um, instead of getting each of my kids a small hot chocolate, lately we've been doing a lot of hot chocolate because, cool. because it's Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, instead of getting them each a small hot chocolate, I get one medium one and then I pour it into, I have their little reusable cups. And so, you know, it's a small thing. I'm reducing one cup, but that's one less cup that I'm having to get. I poured into their cups. These are reusable and then I only have one cup to recycle, right? So little things like that. Um, when you pick up takeout, tell them you don't need cutlery. Uh, and sometimes you have to point that out. Some places are really good about asking you if you need it or not assuming, but tell them no napkins, no cutlery. Uh, if you're bringing it home or if you have, if you're eating it, while you're out, then take your own. We keep straws like these. Uh, it's a metal and a silicone straw in uh, in our car, and we keep you know travel cutlery in our car. You can just take cutlery from your own you know your own spoons and forks and keep them wrapped up in a cloth napkin in your car and use that. You don't have to go buy anything special, but remembering to tell them you don't need those things. Um, so yeah, the little things like that to reduce what waste, even if you can't do a perfect job of it, you know, maybe zero waste doesn't look the same this year. And it definitely hasn't for us, even though we made less trash this year, we've definitely recycled more than I care to. Uh, and Terra cycled more, I've had to buy an extra bin this year than we care to. Uh, and found those other streams like Subaru, I wouldn't have needed that before because we never got disposable cups before. But I'm glad the options there because it's 2020 and that's just what this year has brought us. So give yourself grace, uh, you know, forgive yourself for not being perfect because this is not the year to be perfect. It's the year to do the best you can with what we have and, um, and find those places to refuse and reduce where you can, even if it's not, even if it's getting one less takeout cup, it's still better than nothing. And, uh, you know, if you can save a little bit of plastic from the landfill, a little bit of plastic from being used needlessly, then do it, do what you can where you can and forgive yourself for, for the rest of it. And it's this, it can equate it to same thing with, with people who are making the decision to go vegan or plant-based or whatever you're deciding that you want to take away from whatever your world is, whether it's diet, health, adding, taking away, you, you start out with baby steps and you do the best that you can and it's not for anyone to criticize or judge or to put yourself up against somebody else and compare. It's not what it's about. It's about doing the best that you can in the place that you're at. And this has been exactly one hell of a year for the place that you're at. <laughs> and, and it's different. It's definitely different. But I, kudos to you for still reducing from last year. That's incredible. And then Susan also said, because she's in Asheville, another part of North Carolina, that the co-op there is using compostable bags for bulk items. They bag for customers, which is fantastic because we purchased yeah, that's them for great. HVest as compostable they like, don't leave it in your car because it's just gonna it's just gonna decompose <laughs> if you leave it in the heat it just it's not gonna have a bag anymore 
<laughs> yeah. You're like, I have a bag. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Um, you know, and then wh wherever else you can, you know, if you find something that maybe you would have gotten in bulk before and that's not an option right now, uh, if you can find it in something other than plastic, if you can get it, you know, uh, one example I use is loose leaf tea. I used to go and get my own from a bulk section. I'm not going into stores right now, so I've had to buy it online. Uh, but instead of opting for like a box wrapped in plastic, um, I'm doing like tea tens because I love tea tens. I can reuse them. They're metal, they're recyclable, uh, but I typically reuse them or re-gift them. They also make cute little gift box containers. You know, you can wrap a different paper around the outside. I store my large amounts of bulk tea in them. So, it, you know, you can find ways to, even if you're having to buy something not in bulk like you used to, maybe it comes in a compostable bag now, or maybe you can find it in cardboard or, or, metal or glass instead and the reason why i mean i'm going to answer it first but the reason the reason why this is important is because climate change the environment taking care of the planet that we live on the oceans and the waters that we drink from and the animals live in the animals that live off the planet with the streams being polluted from the garbage that we create and the waste that we create, the chemicals in the products and the items that we, we have that we just trash and throw out into the environment, which impacts, again, the animals and the humans that live on this planet and Mother Earth herself. These are really valid reasons for taking the extra steps, the extra time. Some people are thinking, oh, you want me to do what? Well, you know, start with like, no plastic bags and get any reusable ones. Every event, I have so many bags because I give them away. <laughs> you can get reusable bags. Start there. <laughs> and then and then figure out what your next there is. Right? What do you have to say, Josie? Yep, exactly. Yeah, I mean, plastic, it never goes away. It's always going to be here. It doesn't go back into the earth, you know, with paper those things, you know, it's a, a matter of cutting down trees and processing it. At least it goes back into the earth when you're done with it. Plastic does not. It's scary that we're making all of this plastic that's going to be here with us forever. And it does. It ends up in the oceans. It ends up inside of animals. You know, I've seen a lot of information come out lately about how much plastic we all have inside of ourselves because microplastics end up into our food. It's uh, It's really scary. And yeah, if you can reduce that plastic consumption anywhere, especially with virgin plastics, where you're getting an item that was produced, you know, a, a straw that was made so that you could drink out of it for 15 minutes and then throw it away forever for it to live in a landfill forever. If you can just make that one change, what a big difference we can make, you know? So, and it doesn't mean giving up straws. If you like straws, there are some great alternatives out there. There's silicone straws and glass straws and metal straws and, uh, people are giving them away for free now. I've gotten so many free plastic or the silicone straws <laughs> that we have quite the collection that I've been giving them away because I have more than I will ever need for my family. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of small steps you can take and the goal doesn't have to be get down to a jar. It, it could be get rid of our plastic bag use. It could be stop accepting straws. You know, that could be a really good place to start and then go from there. Uh, but yeah, any step you make is, is a step in the right direction. As long as you have forward momentum, I always say towards zero waste, like I'm not at zero waste. Uh, I don't know if that's even possible in this world and in, in this society to be totally zero waste. And I consider my recycling to be, you know, an offshoot of waste, even though it's being recycled, it's still imperfect, but I'm doing the best I can. And I'm just always doing the best I can improving where I can. And uh, we've been on this journey for a while, but I encourage everyone to just take the first step, whatever that first step is for you and keep moving forward, keep learning more about it and, uh, you know, reduce where you can. Right. And, and a good tip for like having in your car is a straw, like a metal straw, a silicon straw, whichever type of straw that you can wash and reuse. And they come with little cleaners too. We sell them with Triangle Veg Fest with a little cleaner. And a to-go containers, 
that you can jill jill trufant is like the queen Mm -hmm. of to-go containers she comes to our events every vendor has to put whatever food she's buying in her containers that she puts into her bag that's a reusable bag that she takes home to her family she's in durham north carolina so maybe she'll see this but she is that person like i see her she comes to the event she she will not take even the compostable containers she won't take them she has you put it in hers and she brings them so you can have those in your car and your utensils yeah you can buy some but you can easily take your own fork your own knife your own spoon your own reusable cup and your own reusable napkin and have that in a reusable bag in your car for when you need it and yes Mm -hmm. you could forget it at times but you can always go back out to your car to get it and normalize telling weight people no straw Mm -hmm. no straw no no thank you no straw please don't put a straw don't please don't open a straw and put it into my drink because i just take it out and put it on the table and it's wasted because i don't even want one to begin with but i especially don't want one that's going to destroy the environment so if we can normalize that in restaurants, when we go back into them, and even with takeout, if we can normalize that, then we'll be in a much better place for the planet and for, you know, our environmental, our waste. And is these are little things that you can do, like little, little changes that will make a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. That's starting up at that first step, refuse. So, you know, sometimes it's hard to explain the difference between refuse and reduce, but that's really what refuse is about. It's saying no straw, please, no cutlery. I I don't need these things because even if it is a recyclable item, recycling is way down here. So if you can start up here and say refuse first, like don't even bring this thing into your possession where you have to take that next step to figure out where is it going to go now, uh, that you know, eliminates the need for all the rest of the steps if you can refuse the item in the first place. And that means, you know, if you're going to an event or a festival, saying no to the things that you don't want, the things that you know aren't recyclable. Do I need a 40th pen, you know, or notepad or, or whatever the thing is? Like, do I need these things in the first place? Can I refuse and and not bring this into my world in the first place? Right, right. I, I understand. <laughs> I have so much... And when you do events all year round, you end up with a lot of stuff. And you, you also have the ability to give that stuff away. <laughs> to put it to somebody else's house. I'm sorry we're doing this whole thing about zero waste, but I'd rather be in your house than in mine. And, you know, and then you can figure out what to do with it. And that's okay. Maybe you'll use it better than I will. <laughs> that's right. As you know, I know that you've given away like a Triangle Veg Fest shirt. I've got millions of them. <laughs> and, and every year you get another one. Because <laughs> Dylan yep. gives it to you at the, at the Thanksgiving. <laughs> so yep. I, I understand. <laughs> but I have friends who are also vegan and don't have a shirt. So I'm spreading the love. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> it's absolutely perfect. Josie, this has been incredible. I know we could go on and on and and everyone who's watched and and stuck with us thank you but Josie if somebody wanted to like you've got so many resources in this talk well first how do people find you and your blog if they want to reach out to you so I have a Facebook page called going green with an exclamation mark at the end and that is the main place where I have conversations about you know new things I've discovered um (laughs) No worries. <laughs> New things, you know, I've discovered or articles of interest or where we discuss what do you do with X, you know, with this item? How do you how do you repurpose this item or how do you avoid this item? So going green on Facebook. Um, and then my blog is zero waste veg dot wordpress dot com. Okay, and I write about zero waste veg dot wordpress dot com. Um, and I don't update it a ton, but the articles that are on there or, you know, the blog post I've made before, I talk about all kinds of different things, how to zero waste your bathroom, how to zero waste your kitchen, zero waste grocery shopping, um, zero waste during a pandemic was my most recent one. I talk more about our um, past, how we got to where we are. And um, and you can reach me there if you type in a question or anything, I will get a notification and and connect with you and respond. Awesome. And then Susan said, thank you, Josie. 
and Helene, which is fine. And then Ashley said, great talk, very informative. I couldn't agree That's more. My cousin. <laughs> oh, there you go. Awesome. I know your mom was on here too. Hi, Ashley. <laughs> oh, she told me she was going to watch. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> she definitely joined us. I looked down, I keep the Facebook stream running on my phone. So she, she was definitely in there as well. Uh, anything <laughs> else that you want to share? Um, nothing I can think of. I just want to encourage everyone to start where you are and to, to do your best and, uh, and not to compare yourself to me or anyone else, just compare yourself to yourself. And, uh, and I'm here if anyone has questions or wants to talk or complain or brainstorm or whatever, I am here for you. And she is, that's not just, those aren't just words. <laughs> so, you know, she, Josie and, and her family are uh, incredible in raising wonderful, wonderful children. And I love seeing you and spending time with all of you. So I look forward to being able to do that again. And then oh, thank you. Thank Likewise. You <laughs> there you go. Um. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And like I said, have a happy birthday. No quiche. Sorry. But you know, you never, if I get motivated, <laughs> probably not, but it's been a few years, but next year, next year, I will make it a goal for your birthday for, for the holiday party <laughs> to get you some vegan quiche and it'll be even better because i'll use just egg which like blew away the other oh. version it'll this will just blow that away and, and if you don't understand what we're talking about i made vegan quiche for a holiday party years ago and josie loved it and and then i just started making josie vegan quiche because her birthday is coming up at the end of december <laughs> and then i would just bring her vegan quiche and she would take that home <laughs> as my like way of you know, if someone likes something, we're just those type of people. Okay, there you go. And the new recipe, oh gosh, it, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I so, can't wait to try it. <laughs> so, and hopefully it won't be a year. So every, thank you, Josie. <laughs> I really appreciate you. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Thank you. All right. Bye, hun. <laughs> bye. Well, thank you so much for joining us for our last Virtual Veg Fest Live of 2020. It has been a wild wild year and this has been great for my public speaking because i i do love to do that and i don't really get that opportunity when the world is kind of the normal for me but thank you and that's i mean merry christmas happy holidays happy kwanzaa happy new year any any holiday that you celebrate or don't celebrate whatever it is just be happy and be kind to one another and wear a mask make sure you wear a mask over your nose under your chin or under your ears. Don't expose your nose. Why? Because it's connected to your lungs and it makes this kind of useless. So just make sure you wear your mask correctly. Social distance, kind of right now, really don't go around people. I mean, it was serious to not go around people before, but probably now, like really just kind of take it easy. Celebrate with the, one lo the loved ones that you know are safe and don't congregate and so let's get a hold of this virus and do what we have to do to have some resemblance of normalcy in 2021 as best that we can. And go curbside pickup and take out of restaurants, your vegan restaurants in your communities, restaurants that are supportive of vegans, vegan food, wonderful people. It's really rough for them. So if you can do curbside pickup, go to food trucks, wherever you can. If you have the means and you can do that, please do and help support them. So like I said, we'll be back next year. Have a great rest of your year. It's a weird thing to say, but that's all that's left. And we'll see you then. Thanks so much. Bye.